Okay, folks, so here we are back in the kitchen. Um, I want to get ready to put the squirrel in the crock pot. So one thing is I don't ever, I, I used to just throw them in. I want to say I don't ever because I used to throw them in the crock pot whole like this. But I found as you're shredding the meat off the bones, it's very difficult to get it off the ribs and this belly meat here because it, it gets very rubbery. So I'm going to get the ribs out of here. Um, I'm really only going to save the bottom two-thirds of this squirrel and then the top third of this squirrel because the ribs and belly meat just turn out to be too much. I want to save the tenderloin in here for this because that's really easy to shred and of course off of the legs here. So what you want to do is you want to get in here with your knife. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use a smaller knife here. And you just want to get down to this rib cage. Just find your last rib in here. You know, you're going to have a couple, but you can see you can poke it through the skin, and that's your last rib. So if you just get it through there, and I just follow it right down the back of the squirrel here just to get this belly meat off. Because like I said, it gets, it gets pretty rubbery. And then the same thing here. You just want to take off the belly meat. Try to get you in a place where you can see this and you'll also remove some of this extra skin and stuff that's on there with that too um, yep just to get down to that last rib down here cutting up to the spine I usually give it a little break and twist there you know and that will usually pull right apart on you I mean, if you lose a little bit here is not a huge deal and then what I'm doing is coming up to the top of the rib cage and I'm just gonna work my way in because I want to get the top of these ribs out but I want to save as much as I can from the shoulder meat and stuff here it's just the ribs like you can come down the ribs a little bit there just to get these these front legs off and then once you get through the bigger bones you can see now you've got a front leg and you don't have all those little vertebrae stuff in here that you're gonna pick through because believe me it's no fun when you get down to um, actually taking this meat off the bone it's pretty difficult to pick out every little piece of vertebrae from these things so yep just coming down here getting through everything and now you've got another front leg and this is what you're gonna be discarding now there's not much on here and like I said this belly meat gets super rubbery the ribs you don't have to deal with all this vertebrae you have a, you're gonna have a little bit of vertebrae here to deal with but there are ways to get this out but for video's sake, we're just going to leave this as is because the, the more you have connected to the rib or to the vertebrae here, the easier it is to, to set it on a separate plate and do this separate than to do all these back haunches. So that's it. And we've got this. We've got that. I may take these off just to separate them and have the haunches. It'll be much easier. So let me chop this stuff up, and then I'll come back to you with the ingredients we're going to use when we put it in our crock pot and how long we're going to cook it for. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, so in my, my cleaning up here, I want to show you this really quick. Um, I came across a front leg where I had shot, and I just smashed the bone to pieces in here. So what I really want to do is I want to get all those bone fragments out of there because that stuff, you just don't want to have to pick all that out. So you are going to lose some meat on some of this stuff. You know, if you have some broken bones in there, I try to get those broken bones out because what you're actually looking at there is that is a, that's a shard of bone and nobody needs to get that lodged in their throat. So uh, maybe you can see a little bit better there. But you see that? That's a shard of bone, and nobody wants that. I don't want that. I don't want anybody eating that from my house or out of my kitchen. So I will sacrifice even this whole piece if it comes down to it, because that's why I use five squirrel, because I know some of these weren't perfect shots. You know, you're always trying for those, but that I head shot, you know. But even if you get safe meat is what I'm stressing here for you. So let me chop the rest of these up. Oh yeah, I just want to tell you too, I also did decide to take these back haunches off of the spine so I can separate all this stuff. So if you come back here to the pelvic bone and you just run your knife down the side of the pelvic bone here, you can get into where the joint is for this hip here and then you can get through that fairly easily. Sometimes it takes some work to find it. You know, you got to clean up enough squirrel to know but 
that's it. And I'm just saving the back haunches there because they'll be a little bit easier to clean off of the bone. And then I'll be able to separate this center vertebrae section and pick it off really carefully to try to make sure I get all the vertebrae out of here. Versus trying to, you know, cut this all off of there. It's just easier to throw it in the crock pot. And then once you get done, it's a little bit easier to separate this stuff. And then you can get some good shredded meat off of this. All right. Well, I'm going to continue back on with cutting up these squirrels. So we'll be seeing in a little bit. And I'm tossing them over here. I have a, a container with some cold salt water in it. I just I don't know if it helps anything or, or what. But I like to keep everything fresh. And I figure the salt will start breaking down the meat a little bit more and help it cook a little faster. All right, folks, so we have our squirrel. They have them. They're probably quartered, I guess you could say. I've been soaking in salt water for the whole time I've been chopping everything up, and I did a little cleanup here. Um, so they're just sitting in the salt water now, but I want to show you what I'm using. Um, you guys know normally I'll use this Markham Steak and Chop stuff from Save-A-Lot, but they also have this sizzling burger stuff. It's pretty good, and... I'll use this with my squirrel or anything that's going to be a little gamier, I guess you could say. Um, I really love this with the squirrel, though, the way we're making it today. I'm going to go with hickory liquid smoke this time. We're going to use a little bit more than usual. Uh, I'm going with some cayenne pepper to give it a little bit of bite. Um, I'm actually adding a package of uh, onion soup or dip mix um, to this one instead of cutting up onions and stuff because I'm not going to use anything with the broth. It's just going to be there to cook the squirrel in. Uh, once again, I'm just going to use uh, beef broth here. And I'll put some pepper on it. We're also going to put minced garlic in there. All right, well, let's get this stuff Okay, together. folks, so I pre-mixed my dry ingredients here together, except for my pepper. Um, I used one and a half tablespoons of the sizzling burger seasoning. Um, I also used a half of a tablespoon of cayenne pepper and I added that onion soup mix into this bowl already. I pre-mixed it. I figured I'd give you guys some measurements on this stuff. Um, my minced garlic here, I'm going to use, comes in water or, or uh, olive oil. I believe this one's in water because it's blue. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Could be. Does Cap say? No. Minced garlic. Nope, it doesn't say. I believe it's green. It'll say it's in uh, olive oil. But I'm just going to use... I'm just going to use a heaping... One heaping tablespoon, I guess. We'll make this one a little bit less because I don't want to have too much. But we're going to mix that in there. And then I'm going to go with a whole tablespoon of liquid smoke. And we're using hickory because why not? We're cooking squirrel. So everything's a little nutty around here. All right. And that is one tablespoon of liquid smoke. Now, what we want to do is we want to add our squirrel pieces into our crock pot. Um, we want to... And then we want to add our beef broth over a little bit to get it on the bottom. Then I'm going to mix this stuff over. I'll probably pour my beef broth into this as I stir it onto... The squirrel just so it mixes everything up in there um, and once again I'm gonna just do pepper and here with the pepper I'm not uh, you know not too crazy about the measurements so I use a grinder here so I just grind till it looks like there's enough on top for me you know all right well let me get all these ingredients out of the way and then we'll get ready to load this crock pot up and get her started all right, folks, so what I want to do here is I want to take my beef broth and I'm going to add a little bit to my to my dry mix here. Then I'm going to add a little bit into the bottom just so I got some in the bottom. Then we're just going to add our squirrel pieces here into the crock pot. And I just want them to be layered on the bottom there. It really doesn't matter. Just get them in there. And I'm, you know, we're straight out of the salt water that I had there and then into the crock pot. Okay, and now that we got that in our crock pot, I'm just going to mix up my dry ingredients here. It doesn't have to be crazy mixed up. You're not trying to mix really anything up here. You're just trying to get a to come out of the 
come out of the bowl a little bit easier. Once I get it in there, I'll use my fork and I'll stir all this around. Let me pour a little bit more of this broth in here just to rinse all the good seasonings out of here. It'd be nice to have a nice clean bowl when I'm done and I just keep adding all this beef broth until it's gone. And basically what that's gonna do, that's gonna cover up all the squirrel in there. You wanna cover it up because if you don't get it covered up, you'll get pieces that are super tough that have been cooking outside of the liquid. So I just wanna mix up my ingredients and everything in here and make sure everything is below the, the line. If it's not below where you, or if it's not covering all the squirrel that you want in there, you can add water to this, it's okay, just to keep the moisture content. And it looks like I am going to add one bottle of water to this. So I'm just gonna use spring water, it's from Aldi. But I'm just going to add it because I want that to be completely covered up. I don't want any pieces of that squirrel outside of outside the water. So, you know, after you've mixed everything around, that's it. Now it's just a waiting game for about five and a half hours. So we'll turn her on here. We'll throw the lid on. We'll turn it on the mode. We'll go high for five hours and then we'll check it after that. Sometimes you gotta add a little bit more time, but I think five hours might be sufficient. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. We'll uh, check it out after the time comes. Okay folks, so I checked out uh, I checked out my squirrel pieces here and they look like they are ready to come out. So I'm gonna take them out now. You can see they're really nice and done. I'll just show you here. This meat is just going to peel right off of the bone here. So I'm going to let this cool down a little bit because it's best to do it by hand so that you know you got all the bones. Um, so I'm just going to take this out here, all this yummy squirrel meat. And I'm going to put it here in this glass bowl. And I'll let it cool off uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. We'll see. And then I'm going to shred it up, and I'll get back to you whenever we get on to our next step. So, stay tuned. Okay, folks, so we got our our uh, squirrel meat here shredded up. It shredded really nice off the bone. Um, we've got some thick-cut bacon here, and I've got some thinly sliced um, sirloin tip thin, I guess is what it's called. These are just a couple pieces that came off. I'll make some smaller ones. But our whole goal here with this, let me move this meat over to here, since now I got my hands all full of meat. So our whole goal here with this, what we're doing, is we're taking this uh, thin sirloin and then we're filling it with squirrel meat. And then we are gonna roll this up. Let's see if we can get this inside that sirloin and then you take a piece of bacon and then we're going to wrap our bacon around here and I'm going to use two pieces for this one probably for each one. Oh man this is going to be so amazing and then once you get it wrapped you can use toothpicks in it you don't have to and then I'm just going to set it on my cookie sheet there so let me wrap up the rest of these. I don't even know what I'm going to call these things. Squirrel wraps? Uh, who knows? Give me a name, somebody. Leave me a comment with a name on what these should be called. All right. Well, let me wrap the rest of these up, and then we'll get back to you just before we put them in the oven, and I'll show you the temperatures we're going to be running at and for how long we're going to cook this. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, we got our squirrel and our sirloin tip wrapped up with bacon. Um, so I'm going to throw them in the oven. Uh, I preheated it to 350. I'm going to throw these in there for 25 minutes. Once the bacon is nice and cooked on the outside, it'll be done. I mean, it doesn't take anything to cook that meat. Um, and the squirrel, we already cooked in the crock pot. So, all right, well, let me put this thing in the oven, and then uh, Angie will be over here. All right, folks, well, till we meet again in about 25 minutes. Okay, folks, so here they are. There's our 
bacon wrapped steak stuffed with squirrel meat and Angie's here and she's gonna do our uh, our taste test as usual here so she's gonna cut into one and we'll see what it tastes like see if it's good or you know if we're ordering pizza <laughs> Is this super good? It's really good. Good, good. Well, folks, if you like this recipe, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And we're going to tear into this here right now. But as you can see there, you know, the inside the squirrel stuffed steak bacon wrap, I guess. I don't know. You guys give me the, give me a name for this. Um, <laughs> and maybe I'll use it in the next one. But right now, it's just a protein-packed meatapalooza. All right, stay tuned for some more recipes from our kitchen.